from the scriptures this morning, from um, Matthew, uh, last chapter, 28, and um, verse 16 to 20. Matthew 28, verse 16 to 20, page in the New Testament, page number 44. The 11 disciples went to the hill in Galilee, where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, even though some of them doubted. Jesus drew near and said to them, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and I will be with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Once upon a time, there was a king in India called um, the Ashoka the Great. He became a very powerful king when he won the Battle of Kalinga, probably the biggest state at the time in India. And when he saw the, the scale of destruction, human destruction, he actually um, repented from all violence, and became a very peaceful, uh, a religious man. And soon after that, he started sending missionaries to surrounding country to spread his new found religion. But Bible tells us uh, about a greater king than King Ashoka. The king who is not uh, the, uh, who rules over a country, but the king, the Lord Jesus Christ, who rules uh, in heaven and on earth and forever. His rule is eternal. And then after winning his battle uh, on the cross, over demonic forces, when he died and rose again, he's, he commanded his church and given them the great commission to go and spread his kingdom to the ends of the earth. Jesus says in, in the chapter we just read in the verse that I all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations. The context of this uh, 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 passage is that Jesus has been rejected by his own people. Now he has been arrested and crucified, died and buried, and now resurrected came back to life. And before his ascension, he was speaking to his disciples and gave them the great commission, what we call um, the church, the uh, great commission. I'm going to speak about um, two things this morning. Um, I'd like to encourage you to take part in evangelism by 
focusing on or helping us or to draw our attention to how much that we have been blessed to assist um, evangelism or mission and what we are called to do by our Lord. So two things. First thing is our responsibility, our uh, privileges actually, First, I'm going to talk about our privileges in mission. And the second thing, I'll be talking about our responsibilities in mission. So first uh, um, uh, point, our privileges. The word privilege means when you are granted a special uh, right or advantage, or entitlement. So Lord Jesus has granted us this special uh, uh, privileges that I'm going to talk about. Four privileges uh, I am going to share with you this morning. The first privilege is when we go to mission, we go with his authority. We go with his authority. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. So Jesus actually authorizing us as ambassadors, his ambassadors, and sending us with his authority to invite people of all nations into his kingdom. My cousin, I just been to India, as you know. Uh, I, I visited my cousin uh, in Punjab. And he has a, 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 a good size shop, electrical shop. He sells electricals. And now he's added a, a, a new item in his collection. Mobile phones. And um, he's managed to get... Um, uh, authorization, dealership from Samsung phones. And no one in the entire uh, town has any uh, authorization apart from him, from that company. So he is a genuine uh, 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 authorized dealer of uh, Samsung phones, and nobody can uh, sell uh, in that town. In the same way, the church, every believer, has been given the authorization of the genuine agent of God, if you like, to spread the gospel. So this is a very a privileged position to be in. Jesus will supply all what you need when you go to share the gospel, his power, his guidance, and his protection. And Jesus has chosen you and me to share his love and his compassion with everybody else. So this is a great privilege and honor to be authorized by our Lord Jesus Christ to have authority, his authority, when we go. So first one, first privilege is we go in his authority. Secondly, second privilege is we go with Jesus' gospel, good news. Um, Mark 16, 15 uh, says, go into all the world. This is Jesus Christ. Is, Jesus Christ is speaking. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So Jesus is not saying go, just go, but he also giving us a gospel to share with people. We have a story to tell. We have a message from God to share. 
God's word is powerful. It's alive and active. When we share God's word with people, something happens. What is the real gospel, you might ask? What is the gospel? If you want to capture it in one verse, just memorize John 3.16. God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only begotten son, and whoever believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life. This verse has all most of the ingredients of the gospel. It reveals the love of God towards the whole world. It reveals the gift of his son to the world. It reveals the gift of faith to the, to the non-believers. And it uh, reveals the gift of everlasting life from God. So memorize uh, this verse if you haven't. Um, I know most of, most of you probably have memorized it. Lord Jesus has entrusted this gospel to us so that we may go and share it with others. We must not keep it to ourselves and for our benefit. For example, if I, I don't have a lot of money in my pocket now. <laughs> for example, if I give you a million pound in cash this morning, to go and share it with those who are in need. But uh, instead of doing that, you, if you go and then tomorrow, Monday, go in the morning into your bank and say, okay, here is a million pound, put it into my account, higher interest. You won't be doing what I have asked you to do. Jesus, in the same way, has entrusted his gospel to us so that we may not just take a benefit you know, from it ourselves, but share it with others. If we don't do it, we are not obeying the great command of the Lord Jesus Christ. Share it with every creature, Lord Jesus said. In your circle, God has made no other arrangements to share the gospel apart from yourself. This is our responsibility. It's a great responsibility. God has done, uh, hasn't made any other arrangement for somebody to share the gospel apart from yourself, in your circle of friends and neighbors and family. And sharing gospel is an adventurous exercise. Peter discovered it on the day of Pentecost. You see, he has been very fearful, but on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit came, he was uh, emboldened and encouraged and strengthened, and the first sermon of Peter converted 3,000 people. You see, it's an adventurous exercise. So, Jesus sent us with authority, his authority, his gospel. The thirdly, we go with Jesus' power, the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8 says this very simply, that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. He says, he's not just sent us with his uh, authority, with gospel, but his power, dynamite, strength to preach the gospel. 
Holy Spirit makes us bold. That's one thing that we need when we share Lord Jesus' message. Message is very offensive, actually. You cannot save yourself, but only Jesus can save you. The human heart is full of pride. One don't want to hear this sort of stuff. So we need boldness. And Holy Spirit, the power of God, also gives us, he guides us, gives us guidance. He guides us, he helps us um, to what to say. Because uh, without the Holy Spirit, we will be fearful and be confused. But with the Holy Spirit's guidance and power, we can actually uh, witness effectively. Lord Jesus has sent us with his authority, with his gospel, with his power. And fourthly, we go with Jesus' presence. Verse 20 Say, surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You see, in the same sentence, there is a lot of words that Jesus put in to help us to believe what he says. Normally he says, truly, truly, I say to you. <laughs> because when this uh, phrase comes, truly, truly, I say to you, Jesus always means that, believe or not, this is the truth. But he takes a different approach here. He, share, he said the first word is surely. That means 100%, without a doubt. Always. The second word. No time limit. No expiry date of my presence with you. I will be with you always. So I am with you itself. It's very encouraging. Whenever God in the Old Testament uh, wanted to give a commission to any individual, maybe Moses and uh, David and others, um, they always, uh, Joshua for that example, um, they always, you know, very, they shown, they were quite uh, uh, unsure or, or were not prepared to take the commission from God. They said, who I am, Moses said. <laughs> and Joshua was the same. He was very uh, weak, uh, though he was very, very successful. When it came to lead his people, God in, uh, encouraged him, saying, I am with you. So Jesus is saying, I am with you even to the end of the age. So we are in the same age after 2,000 years later. And Jesus' presence is with his church even today. So what it means, what application, we should not be afraid when we go out in his name, because he's there with us, we should not be afraid, we should not be discouraged on the face of opposition. Especially in this day and age, opposition is growing by the day towards Christians and, and their message. Paul had a very fruitful ministry but uh, at the same time, he struggled a lot. He faced a lot of difficulties and persecution. And in, there was one occasion when he was in the city of Corinth, and he was uh, confronted by the crowd and by individuals, and he was discouraged. And Lord Jesus uh, encouraged him in a vision, uh, Acts 18, 10 says that do not, Lord Jesus speaks here, do not be afraid, keep on speaking, do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one is going to attack 
and harm you, for I have many people in this city. We are not alone when we share the gospel with people. Lord Jesus is right there with us. When we lose hope, he is there to give us hope. His promise is true and trustworthy. So we should not be afraid to go in his name because his presence is with us. His presence also means that he gives uh, us the exact word that other person needs to hear. And he gives the understanding of that word to that person. And he brings conviction and persuade the person to put his or her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll just share uh, one example with you of that. I mean, I've shared this before from here. Maybe three, four years ago, um, I went to a hospital on my, just uh, my routine appointment, London Royal Hospital in Whitechapel. Um, as I was waiting for the doctor, doctor lost my record, actually. He said, ask, ask me to wait uh, until he finds uh, the record. And at the same time, I started talking to two uh, women who were at the reception. And I shared my testimony. And at the end, I normally don't do that. I asked uh, both of the ladies, would you like to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? And one of them said, yes. I was, was, it, I was surprised, actually, <laughs> and glad, glad at the same time. And uh, I said, okay, let's pray here. She said, not here, um, in, in, in the room. So we went into one of the rooms. She opened the room, and then there um, she uh, prayed a sinner's prayer and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. And then she told me, this, what you said, this is the exact word I needed to hear. Her mom was Sikh. She was half Indian. And the uh, Lord was working on her. And uh, as I came from the Sikh background, and I shared, uh, and she said, yeah, it makes sense. And, and she believed there and then. I mean, this is wonderful. I mean, you know, that when you have Christ's presence with you, he knows what he's doing in the other person's life. He can give you exact words. That is the sign of his guidance, his presence. So why do we need such authority? <coughs> Firstly, so that we may save many souls from Satan's grip. Satan has become the ruler of this world and has blinded the non-believer's mind. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 simply put it like this, that the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So Satan has blinded the minds of the non-believers. They don't see any beauty in what we share of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we have been given this authority to take the gospel, take, go with his authority, presence, and as a work experience to his disciples early in his ministry, Lord Jesus sent them two by two, remember, 70 or 72? That was work experience for them. 
Jesus gave them authority to heal the sick, proclaim the gospel, and, you know, deliver from the, uh, the demonic forces. Now, you remember, they came back rejoicing because even, they said, the, uh, the demons submitted to them. The authority is real. If you read uh, Philippians uh, and Paul uh, done a deliverance, a very dramatic deliverance. There was a slave girl possessed by the evil spirit uh, told the future to people. And um, the, she said to the, the demon in the uh, girl, said to uh, Paul, and no, these are the servants of the Most High God. They share the way of uh, salvation. And one day, uh, Paul was passing, and he said the same thing, and Paul uh, turned around and said, you know, out of this girl, and demon had to leave. So the authority is real, even today. As you may remember, um, myself and a brother called Harpal, who used to come to our church. We used to have a, a program on Glory TV, a Christian channel, Asian Christian channel on Sky. Uh, we used to do a program uh, called uh, Come Let Us Pray. And we used to pray for people live. People could ring in and uh, we, we, we prayed for people. And uh, as we were coming home, returning uh, from the studios, uh, my phone rang, and then we stopped on the side and then take that, take that call. And uh, there was a gentleman, Punjabi gentleman from Birmingham, uh, and he said that um, we have a problem, a big problem. The spirit, a demon spirit comes in our home and we could hear its voice sound when he comes. Because of result of that, our business is gone, our children are gone wild, there's no peace in the house. It's a real big problem. Can you pray for us? Myself and uh, Harpal, we, we prayed that uh, the, that the demon would stop coming and all the, we prayed for the whole, all the problems. Six weeks later, this gentleman called again. He said that after you prayed, three days after, the evil spirit stopped coming. And I said then, I said, why it took six weeks for you to call us? He said, you know what he said? He said, I, want to make, I wanted to make sure that he, it doesn't return. So we have the, the authority of Christ Jesus all over the demonic forces when we pray in his name, things happen. Secondly, why we've given the authority so that we may stand against satanic forces, hostility. When we heal the sick, when we save souls and uh, cast out demons, it is an attack on Satan's kingdom. And he fights back. If you remember uh, Acts, in Acts 19, Sons of Sceva were trying to uh, deliver one man from the spirits. And when they tried to do it, and the spirit says, um, I know Jesus, I know about Paul, but who are you? See, they did not have the authority from Christ, but they're trying to uh, cast out demon. And you know what? As you... No, the demon jumped on them, beaten them so much, and then they ran naked. And uh, really, 
uh, a terrifying experience for them. But that shows the, the power of demonic forces. So Jesus is allowing us to go into the world with the authority on the demonic forces. The, the gospel that has power, his presence, so he has equipped us so much to reach out. So the first point is our privileges in Great Commission, his authority, his gospel, his Holy Spirit, and his presence. Second point, our responsibilities in Great Commission. Obviously, with privileges, responsibility will come. The first responsibility is that we must go. Lord Jesus said, you know, all authority has been given to me, and now therefore go. It's uh, Jesus' marching orders to the army of believers for worldwide evangelism. This is it. He didn't say, wait for the unbelievers to turn to the church and on Sunday. But he said, go out, reach out, seek. He himself says, I have come to seek and to save the lost. He did not simply say, I have came to save the lost, but the uh, word seek. Uh, suggests that uh, he came to seek and then to save. He did not wait for uh, people to come to him and then as, a, uh, as most of the gurus actually in India do that. They, 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 they have a, a, a specific place. People come to him. He doesn't go out to seek you know, his uh, followers. Christ Jesus did. Um, one example of that, when... Uh, um, then after uh, Lord Jesus uh, uh, um, healed Peter's mother-in-law, on that same evening, a lot of people brought sick and demon-possessed to Lord Jesus, and he delivered them all. And early next morning, he went to pray in the lonely place and uh, and disciples came to, to seek him, and, to, and, and, and when, they, when they saw him, and he said, okay, come, let us go back to that village, and so we can, we can, we can uh, heal more people. But Jesus said to them, I must proclaim to the other towns, this is why I was sent. So, he came to seek and to save the lost. So Jesus is our model of evangelism. We need to uh, share the gospel as he did. He shown the people the love and compassion. He made a difference in the lives of many people. And he sided with the weak and the vulnerable. He gave them hope. But he also challenged many to repent. And we must follow our Lord's example. If we do not go out, um, God's kingdom will not grow automatically. The gods, how does God's kingdom grow? when more and more people put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a physical, you know, uh, uh, kingdom. When more and more people come into the Lord Jesus Christ, God's kingdom grows. Christianity is a missionary faith. In every age, people from West, maybe more in the beginning, went to all over the world to share the gospel. Missionaries did it. 
in the, in the first century, disciples went to all the world. You know, um, uh, uh, Thomas, uh, Apostle Thomas, went to India. Um, and uh, Paul went to Mediterranean countries. Uh, many other people, yeah, actually. I mean, even Sarah Brown, <laughs> Paul and Sarah Brown, uh, are gone to uh, Thailand, uh, you know, whom we support as well. So we must go, the first responsibility. The second responsibility, that we make disciples, Lord Jesus' disciples. Um, Jesus said, go and make my disciples. You see, don't make people vaguely religious or turn them into just a churchgoers. Discipleship is very important when somebody comes to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The uh, aftercare is very important. Jesus actually touched on that in verse uh, 20. Uh, baptize them and to teach them to obey everything I, ha I have commanded you. So baptism and uh, teaching them to live a life of obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. And like Jesus, practice what you preach. Because if, uh, if you don't, if you just share the message and then don't live a life, it won't work out. Because um, out there, there are people who would become Christ's followers or disciples. Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't have said that. And Jesus says in John 10, 16, he said, I have other sheep. They will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. So there are people out there if we go and share the gospel, they will become uh, the disciples of Christ. That's how I actually became the Lord Jesus' disciple. I was uh, minding my own business, actually, literally. <laughs> I had a business, and uh, um, I was busy. Though I was kind of a, a religious uh, a person, um, but I did not know God. I did not know the love of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I maybe close, I came close to Christ as much. Probably I, I saw some sort of Christians in Indian films. That's the how close I got. But then somebody, a, a, a Muslim student from Pakistan, very unlikely candidate, came to work for me. We used to manufacture ladies' garments, and he started working for me. And after a few months, he gave his life to Christ. And over the months and years, he changed so much. So I was um, inspired by his life. I wanted to live that kind of life, pure and sacrificial and holy life. And he gave me Bible in my own language as a Christmas present. So the word and life together actually brought me into the kingdom of God. Powerful stuff. So God loves and wants to save people through us in the same way. So Third responsibility, first is must go. Uh, second responsibility is we make disciples. Third responsibility is we make disciples of all nations. God loves people of all religions, all nations, all communities. This is what John 3.16 actually says God loved the world so uh, God loved the world so much 
So if God loves the world, we should do the same. And we should reach out to them. And uh, even the command is the same, you know, uh, Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So this is aspect of all nations. That's why uh, now the role has been reversed over the centuries. The West used to send the missionary to the South and in Africa and then to the, uh, to the East and India. And now they are actually sending the missionaries to us. <laughs> they know that we, need, we, we are in need now in that sense. In the recent times, we, we, we noticed that many people from many nations came to us in, in the West. And this is our responsibility, to share the gospel with them. As well as here uh, in their own country as well. Because some people say either or, or either here or send missionaries. But we have the responsibility to reach everybody in our country or people from all nations. I mean, London probably the most diverse, culturally diverse con- uh, city in the world. You don't know whom you're going to meet from, you know, uh, from which nations. So we don't have any excuse. <laughs> you know, so. so Bible, you know, in the uh, Revelation, uh, tells us that uh, the, in heaven at the end, people from all nations will stand before God and worship him. Um, as I conclude, um, Lord Jesus, when he returned to heaven, completing, completing the work of salvation, he called all the angels and, 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 uh, and told them what he did and, uh, and what he now has done the, uh, in terms of entrusting the gospel or great, great commission to the believers. The angels said, Lord, they are very weak and unreliable people, creatures. How can your... Uh, Great commission be completed. And Lord Jesus tells them that uh, I have blessed them with many things. I have blessed them with my authority, with my gospel, with my own Holy Spirit, and with my presence. Apart from that, They have tasted my love for them. They will do it. And the question for us this morning is, will you do it? Will I do it? We have everything that we need to assist us to share the gospel. His word, his presence, his Holy Spirit, his authority. Many people fear. But why? Why? What do you lack? When we see such authority as to drive out demons, raise the dead, guided by the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together.